Hi, I'm Dawn Damari, and you're listening to another episode of A Teaspoon of Healing. And today I'm pleased to have my guest with me, Udo Erasmus, and he is the founder of Udo's Choice Line. Hi, Udo. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Oh, life is good. It beats the alternative. <laughs> Definitely. And thank you for joining me on the podcast. So, first of all, I guess we'll talk about Udo's Choice line and yep. nutrition. So, Udo's Choice can be found in Whole Foods and other health food stores. And so, you're a pioneer of flaxseed oil. Right. What, what happened was in 1980, I got poisoned by pesticides. I had a job oh. as a pesticide sprayer because I took a full-time job after my marriage broke up and I was very upset and I was very careless and I sprayed them and I walked barefoot over the lawns I sprayed till the skin peeled off oh my feet gosh. and then I wore rubber boots and then people said to me, and it was a summer job, so I did it in a bathing suit because I liked getting a tan, vanity, vanity, right? <laughs> and uh, somebody said to me, don't you, aren't you worried you're going to get poisoned? And my, I was, I, I, I was pretty dense. I mean, I'm still dense, but I was really dense. And I said, nah, I'm immune. And then I got poisoned after three years of oh. being careless like that. Went to the doctor, said, what do you have for pesticide poisoning? She said, nothing. And that's when the penny dropped. <laughs> that's when I said, oh, my God, my wow. health really is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And because I had background in biochemistry and genetics from before, I decided if the doctors couldn't help me, I would figure it out myself because I doctors are disease management anyway, not healthcare. Mm -hmm. And so I had a little bit of an attitude about them anyway. And, <laughs> uh, and I thought the health comes from, nat com comes from living in line with nature. So the idea is, if your something goes wrong, then you need to raise your standards, standard of food, water, air, and solar energy. Because when you raise your standard, your body is always turning over. Like, some people say 98% of the atoms in your body are removed and replaced every year. 98%. So the, your body is a major construction site, always turning over, always being rebuilt. And if you raise your standard, then in one year, you will have rebuilt your body 98% to that higher standard. And so the idea is, yeah, if you raise the standards, you're going to get better outcomes. And so I got into reading about nutrition and health and nutrition and disease and, you know, all of the, the stuff in the research, that, which I was capable of reading because of the background I had. Mm -hmm. I got stuck on oils and fats because they are the most sensitive of our nutrients. They are damaged by light, oxygen, heat. They need the most care. And when you think about it, we give oils the least care. We throw them in frying pans and turn them mm -hmm. into smoke. And I started thinking about it. It's like, wow, these are sensitive. Oh, and then it was, uh, there are two essential fatty acids the body can't make that, has to, that it has to get from outside. They're called omega-3 and omega-6. Mm -hmm. And the year after I got poisoned, which was in 1980, in 1981, omega-3 was established as an essential nutrient that you can't make, got to have, can't live without. If you don't get enough, your health goes down. If you don't get enough long enough, you die. And if you bring it back before you die in adequate quantities, then all of your problems that you get from not having enough get reversed. And it was like, oh my God, omega-3s, 99% of the population does not get enough for optimum health. And I had a, I mean, I went off like a firecracker. It was, oh my God, if we could make them with health in mind, and we could protect them from damage by light, oxygen, heat. And we could bring them back into the population that is virtually everyone is not getting enough. Oh, my God, we could help so many people. And I just like, I, 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 I lit up like a firecracker. And that, and that became the drive behind the project. So we made, designed machinery to making oils under protection from light, from oxygen, from heat, while they're being pressed, filtered, filled, settled until they're in a brown glass bottle in a box to cut out the light, uh, nitrogen flushed to keep the oxygen out and capped and refrigerated 
to lower the temperature. So we make oils that are refrigerated in the factory, in the stores, and that we tell you to refrigerate at home and never use for frying. But you add them to food after they come off the heat. So what you're now doing is you're getting omega-3s and omega-6s. We started with flaxseed oil. It's a, it's a poorly balanced oil, has a lot of three, not enough six. And then okay. we made a blend because people were always looking, is there one thing I can do that gets me all the good stuff and none of the bad stuff? I wrote mm-hmm. a book called, the, uh, the book is called Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, but they're, because they're literally two completely opposite stories about fats. And if you want to know how to stay healthy, you need to understand which are the good ones and bring them in and which ones are the bad ones and make sure you don't bring them in. So which are the good ones that you should bring in and which ones are the bad ones? Yeah. Well, omega-3 and omega-6 made with health in mind are the good ones. Everything else is optional. Everything else. It doesn't matter okay. omega-3 and 6, but there's an omega-9 and there's a saturated and there's mm-hmm. a whole bunch of different kinds of oils with different yeah. uh, fatty acid profiles. Uh, fundamentally, uh, the only thing in the entire universe of fats and oils that you have to have to be to live and be healthy is omega-3 and omega-6. That was known about omega-3 in 1929, and it was established in 1981 for omega-3. And so I ended up at the head of the 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 interest in omega-3s. So and then we created flax oil. It's the richest source of plant-based omega-3s that are affordable and easy, easily available. Because that oil, when it was rancid, was used to make linoleum and, and paint oh, to, to, to protect furniture because it cross-links and reacts with light and oxygen. But, but if you want it to be healthy for your body, then you got to keep it fresh. So that's we ba- basically created the method for making oils with health in mind and then brought the plant-based omega-3s uh, back into the diet. So that, that, was, that's the, that was the project. And nowadays, you know, there's there always there's always talk about different fats and different oils, and you know, more in the popular media about you know seed oils and don't have this and then, yeah, yeah. so it's very confusing. So, but yes. from what you were saying, that the seed oils, it seems like it's, it's damaging when you're heating them, mm-hmm. but if they're refrigerated and they're used to add to the foods. It, it's not something that's going to cause problems. No. Well, I'll tell you what, where, for me, the biggest issue was that got me focused on the importance of making them with care. It was that omega-6 is essential. So you got to have it. Mm-hmm. You can't live without it. You die if you don't get enough long enough. So this it's essential to your health. And other research said omega-6s cause cancer and kill you. Yes. And, I, and my head was just good. What? You have to have it, and then it kills you? (laughs) And then I was like, how can that be? And it was that conflict, that contradiction, and trying to make sense of it, that got me looking into how oils are made. They're damaged when they're made, and they're damaged when we use them. And Mm -hmm. that's the big issue. The essential ones are, by by the way, uh, omega-6 and omega-3 are both polyunsaturated. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's the polyunsaturation, which means they have double bonds between carbon molecules that make them sensitive to reactions with oxygen and light and, and different different things. That's what makes them chemically reactive. That's also what, what gives you energy when you bring them into your body because they're high energy molecules. In fact, omega-3 is the highest energy molecule of all of our essential nutrients. And sometimes we call it the God molecule. You know, if God is light, you know, <laughs> then mm-hmm. there's a lot of light in this molecule. And so it increases in athletes. We've shown that using the blend that I developed, that uh, within a month of starting on taking a tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight per day, mixed in food and intake spread out over the course of the day, athletes ended up with 40 to 60% increase in stamina and performance. And they found that their injuries healed in a third to a half the time, that they recovered in a third to a half the time. And, uh, you know, that kind of benefits that their knee, that their, their joints didn't hurt as much and that they had better flexibility and mobility and less pain. And um, uh, there is no training program and there's no other nutrient that will get you that kind of improvement that quickly. 
And that was because where they're not damaged, because if you damage them, then you lose that energy that they can give you. And they're, and you're getting both of them, uh, and you're getting them in the right ratio. And all of that is important. They're not damaged, and they're not damaged by food preparation. This is this is like really hot stuff. We, you know, we started without money. We just had this in, amazing enthusiasm in a van without air conditioning in the hottest months in the U.S., 35 states, 101 days, 85 cities. And we basically talked to anybody who would listen to us because we were so on fire for this thing that could help so many people. So that's how that got done. <laughs> We worked our buns off, and I don't remember ever feeling, oh, man, this is too hard. This is too much work. Oh, that's a wonder. That's a wonderful story and interesting information, good information for people. Because, again, there's so much, there's so many misconceptions yeah. about oils and fats and nutrition yeah, and, in general. Know, it's gotten even more. And I know it's always been like that, but it seems like even more recently yeah. with social media. Yeah, social, social media. But the other thing is there's a difference between what people find out in research. Mm -hmm. and what people say in order to market products. So in right. marketing, there's a lot of claims being made and a lot, of be, a lot of things being said that all the researchers who know their stuff because they're doing this every day for like 20, 30, 40, 50 years, some of them, they just shake their head and say, I don't know how you get the truth out into a marketplace where everybody who doesn't make the best product lies about it. <laughs> and, it's just, yeah. and it's tough. It's tough for you, for people. To me, lying is a form of dictatorship because it robs you of your choice. You can't make good choices on false information. So it's a dictatorship. So people who lie to you are trying to control you, mm -hmm. or, or are controlling you if they if they succeed in in confusing you. And uh, they don't care about what you, your health. They just care about the money they can make. And that's always an issue in, in, in commerce. I'm going to shift the conversation a little bit because we were talking yeah. a little bit before we got on this yeah. call, before we got about finding peace in chaotic times. And we were talking about technology. I had a little bit of technical issues. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And still the times are pretty chaotic because people's lives have been pretty much, you know, shifted and uprooted so much. So, yeah. so yeah. you have experience in finding peace in chaotic times. Yeah. I came out of the second world war. I was a two and a half years old. We were fleeing on horse-drawn hay wagons, mothers with young children out of what is now Poland, was then Germany, fleeing westward. To, with being chased by the communists in tanks and trucks. And the allies, which, you know, the good guys are supposedly on our side, <laughs> they, were, they were using us refugees as target practice, shooting at us from planes. They were safe. We were in horse-drawn hay wagons on dirt roads. There were dead people and dead horses in the ditches. And uh, there was no military presence on those roads. So these were basically armed forces using refugees as target wow. practice. You know, the kids don't do well in war. I was very shy. I was very, very inward. I was. I le liked reading books because books are safe. No bullets, no real bullets in a, in a book about war. I grew up really early r knowing how bad it gets when people don't cultivate peace in peacetime. Of course, when they when you're mm -hmm. in the middle of a war, everybody is hope. Oh God, please bring us peace, bring please, peace, 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 peace. You know, but nobody nobody created the peace, because the truth is, peace has always been everywhere. Peace is the foundation of the universe, and it is the foundation of your and my existence. It's always everywhere. If you sit still in your place. So make it safe, find a safe place, create a safe place, and then sit in that safe place and close your eyes and see how still you can become and see how deep you can go into that stillness and see how long you can stay there. And while you're doing that, breathe quietly and slowly, don't make any noise, and see how still you can be. And then feel what it feels like to be in that place you will discover there is a peace within you that has always been there, that is not affected by change, by chaos. 
that whenever you take the time to go there, it's there waiting for you. And it feels amazing. It feels beautiful. Now, we have that in us. But we're not really good at going there because what we've done most of our lives is we go out to things. I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to do that. And then something changes. And, and, and the outside world is always changing. Whether you're talking about the seasons, you're talking about the weather, it's always changing. And you're talking, I mean, whatever it is you're talking about in the outside world, it's all always changing. We don't like change when it happens either too fast or in an unknown direction. So we don't know what's going to happen. And we get drawn out to that change. That's natural for survival. Because, oh my God, I feel threatened. Oh my God, things are happening. Pandemic. Oh my God, this virus could take me out. Oh my God. You know, and you know, then I have to depend on experts. The experts themselves often don't know what's going on. Then we depend on people who make money off of this crisis because mm -hmm. crisis is a great way to make money, yeah. right? And so then there we are. But in the whole time that that pandemic has been, there's always some crisis going on. And all the time, you, you need to meet, deal with the crisis in one way or another. And that could be by isolation and wearing the mask and washing your hands and doing all those things. It could be by taking more vitamin D, more, more vitamin C, eating more healthy so that your body is more able, your immune system is more able to deal with whatever comes at it. And as part of it, also cultivate calmness. Because mm -hmm. calmness is also good for the immune system. And when, and when you get stressed, your immune system actually shuts down. If you can't go outside, go inside. Because within you is a peace that is unshakable. And it's not that that peace goes away. What happens is our awareness, our focus of awareness drifts. Right? The moment something, you know, you walk me, let's say you're walking in the park and all of a sudden something jumps out of the bushes. Immediately, your focus of awareness is drawn to the change because you have to assess it. Is this friend or foe or is it irrelevant? And we're doing that all the time. That's our survival mechanism. And because our, our awareness is drawn out away from ourselves where the peace is into the world of change because we have to accommodate those changes, we tend to be more outside in the focus of awareness than inside. And that's the reason why we drift into more and more destructive things, because we are not cultivating peace in peacetime. And then, of course, if you don't cultivate peace, then you cultivate change, or you cultivate reaction to change, or you cultivate uh, whatever, whatever are your, your habits in a time where you're not having to protect yourself from getting shot. Or getting killed. And then when something changes, then you are there with your habits. What do you mean I can't travel? What do you mean I have to wear a mask? That's not fair. That's not right. These are my rights. You get into all kinds of, sometimes they're unreasonable and sometimes they're emotional. And ultimately, when there's a crisis that requires you to be more cautious, then actually cultivating peace is a really good thing to do. So what I did is, you know, and then you listen to the news and the news is always, mm. always coming up with stuff because they need your attention because their right. advertisers want you listening to what they have to sell. So they, they're using getting your attention and they're very good at getting your attention. Every day there's a crisis, breaking news, right? Every day, adrenaline going and it gets your cortisone going and it gets, puts you in survival mode. And when you're in survival mode, then you become a little more prone to letting other people dominate you uh, mm -hmm. because you're trying to be safe. So what I did, one day I shut off my television, sat in my living room on a chair, nobody there except me, <laughs> television's off, windows open, and I, and I can look into the garden, nothing happening in the garden. So peaceful. Living room, so peaceful. Yeah. Sit down into that peace. I just sit there and say, oh my God, it is so peaceful here. But you will find people will not turn off their television, even though they can. You have the power to, yes. <laughs> you know, CNN and Fox can come into your house, but yes. only if you turn on 
only if you yeah. turn on the television and choose the channel, right? So you have choice in how much change you expose yourself to. And because peace is always everywhere, the peace that is the foundation of your existence is not prone mm -hmm. to virus infections. That's but it is part of your it's part of your nature. Something in you is not prone to virus infection. The life energy, which is basically solar energy, was absorbed by plants, stored in bonds between molecules that became our food. We eat those, break down those solar energies released. That's our life. That life energy, that solar energy, that is life, that is unconditional love for your body, that does all the work, is not prone to virus infections can never get sick, can never die, is formless, weightless, does everything in your body, that energy. We call it life, or we call it the master, or we call it solar energy, or we call it unconditional love. Those are all synonyms. If you bring your awareness in touch with that within you, no fear there. If it can't be destroyed, <laughs> fear is about something that you can lose. If you get into the inspiration that comes out of that unconditional love, that's not prone to virus infections either, or sickness of any kind. So there are three things inside of your body that are absolutely immune to stress, to change, to destruction, to illness. And being focused there helps you to stay calm under fire and deal rationally with whatever stresses you need to deal with. Because there are things you need to deal with. Yes. You know, and one day your body will end. We already know that because with birth comes, with birth comes, comes death. One day the body will finish. If you don't know what the danger is, like it is with the, with the, the virus, then learn about it. But learn about it from reliable sources. Yes. And so science, scientists can also be corrupted. Just like, just like politicians can, just like everybody can. And so you, you want to take it with a grain of salt. So you want to go back to the scientists who don't have an agenda in the research they're doing. And then out of that comes more, more contentment and more quiet and more energy for, for the situations where you do need to, uh, you know, where you do need to deal with stress and with, with uh, rapid change. But you have a lot more reserves and are much more resilient when, you know, when you live in line with the way you were designed to live. There's a lot going on. Uh, fundamentally, self-responsible healthcare is is always going to be where I go with it. Now I'm in the in the vul vulnerable group. I know one day I'll, my body will check out. Um, how that's going to happen and when that's going to happen. I don't know, but I also cultivate what is eternal and undying in me because that will not die. Something in us will not die. Yeah. Only the form breaks down. Absolutely. If you can live fully present in all of your being and your surroundings and not caught in thoughts in your head out of fear and out of, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. If you can live fully present in all of your being and your surroundings, that is the cherished state. That is the chair state. That is the state of the masters. Every human being can live in that state because that state is in every human being. But it requires us to do some things that we haven't done before. The biggest one being sitting still, bringing awareness inward, finding that place. We spent nine months in that place if we're term babies in our mother's womb. Yes deep meditation for nine months. Then we came out and then we forgot. That deep meditation is still there. The, the place for it is still there. And, uh, and you know, and things will always change. That's and, true. And to some extent, you can deal with the changes. And to some extent, the changes are out of your control. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your insight on that. And it was really, really helpful, especially about pretty much everything you said. It's very helpful. And before we sign off, where can people find out more information about you, about the oils or about um, Udo's Choice, you know, about any, uh, basically 
anything you've talked about it. Do you have a website yeah. or main social yeah. media? Yeah, udoschoice.com is is my website for the products where we talk about why we made them and how we made them and all that. So that's Udo's choice, U-D-O-S choice. Dot com. Okay. And then I have another website that's called udoerasmus.com. That's more about education and uh, and we have some courses on it. And, and okay. uh, yeah, those those two websites. We're just gearing up slowly to to start doing um, more, more and more online because traveling is not what it used to be. And mm-hmm. and so everything's going online and we're in the process of developing all of that. Getting close. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much, Udo, for your time and for sharing your wisdom on the podcast. And I'll direct people to your website and your social media. They have questions. Yeah. And thank you, Don. Don, your your job is, you know, assuming that what I'm talking about is useful. Your job is at least as important as mine because... Uh, you 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 basically have a you you basically an amplifier, right? Yes, that's an true. Amplifier that's for true. message, getting it out to getting it out to people, and that's super 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 important. Well, thank you. So I totally appreciate you for doing that. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you for coming on. All right. Well, I hope you have a great evening and. And thank you again for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Don. Susan, you remember the time we were in Orange County? We were driving around and we got lost. And we ran into this place called Avila's El Ranchito. You remember the place? The place had awesome decor and authentic margaritas. Did you know that Avila's El Ranchito has been around since 1966? They have 13 locations throughout Orange County. Visit Salvador Avila's location in Lake Forest and Foothill Ranch for great food, ambiance, and specialty margaritas. This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Please consult a physician or other health professional before undertaking changes in lifestyle or wellness habits. The author claims no responsibility to any person or entity for any liability, loss, or damage caused or alleged to be caused directly or indirectly as a result of use, application, or interpretation of the information presented herein.